The Rock Valley Golden Eagles visited the South Suburban Bulldogs on February 20th. Just a week prior, sophomore Jamela Jones was named NJCAA National Player of the Week for the second time and he was going to prove it again tonight. On the first play of the game, Jones put down a long two. Blessing came back and tied up the game quickly. Jones recovered the ball for a fader. After Blessing went right down the middle tapping it off the glass. Laquan Washington spun around for a perfect shot. At 11.35 in the first, Blessing was fouled making a three-point play. Fraley passed the ball to Jones for another bucket. In the first half, Jones had six rebounds, 21 points, and two steals to put SSC up by 15, which would be the largest lead for them on the night. Halftime, Golden Eagles 22, Bulldogs 37. A minute into the second half, picking up the ball off the ground was Cobb making a move in the paint. Eagles put up three more points after. Julius Bird drove to the baseline, passing the ball to Jones. Reaching for a rebound was Washington, adding two to SSC's total. Two minutes later, Jones passed the ball to Fraley in the paint. Then Scott got the ball to Thomas for a three. Chris Harrison made his own three, having 17 points on the night. Around the three minute mark, SSC was put into the bonus. The final was 69 Rock Valley, 80 South Suburban. John Pagotti gave his perspective on the game. Well, I thought first half we did a really good job defensively, and then second half uh, we didn't play very good defense, and we helped off shooters we weren't supposed to help off of. We gave up threes. They made seven threes in the second half, okay? And, and uh, we normally don't give up that many in, in a half like that. I mean, they scored 47 points in the second half. I mean, we can't, for us to be able to win the championship, we can't do that. We can't give up 47 points in the second half, which is what we did. And, and so, um, unfortunately, uh, we're going to have to watch that film and learn from it, okay, because if you give up that in the, in the playoffs, you're going to be in trouble. Then he gave his thoughts about Chris Harrison. Chris did offensively, but defensively, he's got to get a lot better. I mean, and uh, the problem with coaches is they don't say that about players. I mean, Rick Pitino finally did about guys, but Chris gave helped off with a couple shooters. He's wasn't supposed to do so, but he's still learning. And, you know, he got eligible because he was a transfer. And so by the time he got eligible, he wanted to play second semester so he could move on because he'd been out of school for a couple of years. So we made him eligible second semester, but he's just starting to get in the flow. I mean, so for him to get a lot of minutes like that, he's going to make mistakes because he's getting more minutes. So hopefully he'll learn from it. As we go down the stretch, we're going to need him because he is the guy that can score. He is one of our leading three-point shooters. He is one of our uh, guys that can play multiple positions, and he's going to be a key to our playoff run uh, if we make one. Jamal Jones has some history with Harrison. He's a beast. Uh, I've been playing against Chris for a long time. I know his potential. I know his talent. He's probably the most experienced person on the team. He's tough to guard. He's too big down low. Uh, too quick up top. Jones had 33 points on the night and told WCCN that he couldn't have done this without his guys and the help off the bench. After Jones talked about his final regular season game coming up on Thursday. It's an unimaginable feeling. It's a feeling of gratefulness and joy. Being able to play the game I love, I have a strong passion for, having fun with it. You know, the, of course, winning is the goal, but doing it with a group of guys who are all on the same page understand the goals and the, and the task and what we're aiming for. It's just a, a honor to be a part of a program like this. Pagatti continued to talk about Jamel Jones in their next game. Should be National Prayer Week almost every week. So I'm glad he got it last week to give him some recognition as being the, the second time that he got it. And there's only one other guy that in the nation that's ever had that happen. A performance like he had tonight, I mean, the first half he had 21 points. In the second half they started double him. And we have to show him on film some more about how teams are doubling, what you have to do. He should have had about 30 assists tonight if he makes those extra passes and he tried to force a lot. And he's got to trust his teammates more. Well, I think we have to make the adjustments and stuff like that tomorrow in practice. And, and uh, you know, because Kishwaukee's coming in as the hottest. They actually are the hottest team in the region right now. They have eight wins in a row. Besides us, we have nine now. They're the hottest team in the, in the region. So they're playing very, very good basketball right now and beat some great teams and took some other great teams to the wire. So so they're playing really well. So it's going to be a great test for us again. So it doesn't get any easier for us. Sophomore night for the Bulldogs is on February 22nd. I am Claude Martinez reporting for Will Cook County News.